welcome to the Coach Tyler Show. Hi there. Welcome to another episode of the Coach Kayo Show. Um, as I always say, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I'm your host, Kayo De McKinnon, and I'm happy to have you here with me uh, to spend a short time, a few minutes, um, so that we can go through this very um, important show. Remember this show, we talk all things soccer. Um, but more importantly, our ultimate goal is to impact and to inspire the lives of our young people to live out their purpose. Um, in these very uncertain times, um, it's very important that you understand purpose. Um, it's the fuel in your car. Um, this allows you to navigate and to better understand where you need to go. Nevertheless, for the past uh, few weeks, um, I've been paying attention um, intentionally to the Women's World Cup qualifiers, um, being a head coach at the County College of Morris now for women's soccer. You know, I'm, I have a vested interest. I always um, paid attention to the women's game because I love the the learning side when put in the right environment and when given all the resources needed, um, there's a, there is a lack of ego and more of um, putting things into perspective on that side of the game that is very interesting when you're when you're a student of the game and when you enjoy the part of the aspect of teaching teaching the game. But that being said, you know, most of you who would not have paid attention is important to pay attention because a lot of young women now are young ladies having, they got these big dreams and they want to, they're seeing more and more girls on TV. They're seeing more and more women benefiting from the game in a meaningful way, not where they want it to be yet, but you know, everything, everything takes time and then it gets there, then it get there. But it's very important to pay attention. So we want to share some scores and stats with you in this past past week or so on, on what has transpired. And if you, you are a young player playing in high school, playing in clubs, and, and you might be affiliated to one of these Caribbean countries that you could go back and play for them and, and and be given the chance to live out your dreams and to um, maximize your potential because sometimes you don't get the opportunity where you are and you need to go somewhere else and get the opportunity. And oftentimes people then see the value in you. So in the next few minutes, Coach Owa will share with you some scores and some stats on what is transpiring within the women's qualifiers for the World Cup. Take a look. Good evening, all. All right. It's been exciting, 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 exciting CONCACAF championship. Let's get straight to it, right? Group A, leading, Mexico, the two games played, goals four, 17, goals against, zero. In second place, we have Puerto Rico, 13 goals four, zero goals against. Third place, we got Antigua with zero all around. Fourth place, Suriname with zero, goals four, nine against. And then we got Antigua and Barbados, right, at the bottom of the table with zero goals four, 12 against. So that was a tough one for Group A. Group B, we got Guatemala leading. And in second place, we got Costa Rica. Guatemala, with goals four, we have 15. 
goals against, we have zero. Costa Rica, goals for, we have 13, zero against. Rounding off for third place, we got Curacao with zero goals for, seven against. We got St. Kitts and Nevis, zero goals for, seven against. And at the bottom of the table, we got U.S. Virgin Islands with zero goals for, 16 against. All right, we're going off to Group C. We got Dominican Republic leading strong with 13 goals for, zero goals against. Second place, we have Jamaica with 10 goals for, one against. Third place, we got Bermuda with zero goals for, and then we got four against. And then fourth and fifth place, we got Cayman Islands and Grenada with zero, both with zero goals for. And then we have 15, we're talking about Grenada. We have 15 against at the bottom of the table, right? We got Group D, Panama and El Salvador, right? A strong at the top. Panama with 13 goals for, zero goals against. And then we got El Salvador. We got 13 goals for, one against. Then third place, we got Bermuda. Fourth place, Aruba. And then fifth place, around at that bottom, we got Belize, right? Barbados with five against, zero for. That's why they're in third place. We got Aruba with one goals for and seven against. And at the bottom with Belize, we got zero goals for, 15 against, right? Not good. Not good so far. Then we got group E, Cuba leading strong. Right behind them, we got Haiti, third place. Honduras, fourth place. We got British Virgin Islands. And then we got St. Vincent and Grenada's at the bottom, right? Leading strong up top, we got Cuba. Cuba doing well with 17 goals for, zero against. And they're tied. They're actually neck and neck with Haiti. 17 goals for, zero against. Then we got Honduras, third place with zero goals for, six against. British Virgin Islands, zero for, 14 against. And then we got St. Vincent, zero for, 14 against. You see how these things at the bottom, it's very close, right? I like group F, right? For many reasons, right? Coach Cayo from Guyana, they're leading at the top of the table with 11 goals for, zero against. Then we got Trinidad and Tobago, strong competition. They're right behind them with what? Four goals for, one against. Then we got Nicaragua, right? One goals for, two against. Dominica, zero goals for, six against. And then we got Turk and Caicos. We got one for, seven against, right? We got a chance, me and Coach Kyle, we got a chance to watch that Guyana and Turk and Caicos game, all right? I believe it was a good game that we saw for many different reasons. Guyana with 35 shots against zero for Turks and Caicos. 13 shots on target, zero for Turks and Caicos. And then we got nine corners and zero for Turk and Caicos, right? You guys see all this, the big differences, right? The big teams at top, we talk about Mexico and Puerto Rico winning with 17 goals for it. And at the bottom, we teams like Belize and Turks and Caicos, 17 against. For these games to be exciting, we need both teams to come with something, right? We need both teams to come and play and be ready, prepared to be playing at that next level, All right? Guys, exciting, exciting times coming up. If you guys want to look for more scores and stats, tune with us next week, same time. And also, if you guys would like to sponsor this segment, you can look down at the bottom of the screen. They have our information. And also, the Cash App is there for you guys to see. Have a good night. Coyote, McKinnon, and company are ready to dress you in one of their most stylish, comfortable, and attractive athletic gears this fall for you to achieve that desired athletic goal. Check out their online store today for your joggers, tank tops, bras, backpacks, sweatshirts, and everything else you'll need to complete that look. It's Coyote, McKinnon, and company. We care.
Welcome back to the Coach Kayo Show. You're here with Kayo Day McKinnon. I hope that you are making your way into the into the life and also you're sharing the life. I want to thank you all for sharing that information with us. Like I said, if you might be from, <clears throat> excuse me, you might be from Turks and Caicos and um, having a beautiful soccer um, career here and never really knew that you can go back and represent your country. You can put yourself in that position to see where you stock up. You know, a lot of times we want to be at the highest level, but, you know, we, we think that we don't need to start from the bottom. So if you might be that, that young lady and what you see is happening, the games are live now. Remember just five years or six years ago, you didn't even know about the, the Caribbean playing within women's qualifier. You would hear it, but you would never see it. Now you there's, there's live games. Um, so I hope um, with what is happening now, and it's pretty much new, and you've seen a lot of uh, Caribbean coaches being given the opportunity at this level and their and their countries are investing in them to to push them along you know hopefully there'll be more resources in the lesser countries so that they can prepare better um, and they can really give their players an honest and um, an honest chance to really progress so that they can go to bigger and better places to continue to apply their career or apply their trade. Tonight we're speaking on where soccer is going and you are not part three. Um, but it's a good time to get your friends in. It's a good time to tell your teammate. It's a good time to pull your mom for a few minutes. It's a good time to pull your dad. Um, maybe it's a good time to sit down with your friend and just stay off of Instagram for a few minutes because um, there's something in here that I truly believe can change your perspective, can give you a new idea, can give you an opportunity to, you know, go in a different direction. If you've done the same thing over and over and the result, um, the result remain the same or the same results you keep getting and getting and getting, maybe you need to do something different. And doing something different oftentimes could open up your eyes, open up your, um, uh, change your mindset, rewire your brain so you can get on that path um, towards greatness. Feel free to share your comments. Feel free to ask questions. I'll try to answer it to the best of my ability here. And if you haven't subscribed to, the, to this channel as yet, please do so, Coyote McKinnon and Co. on YouTube. Remember, this show is uncommon. More importantly, it's unscripted. But one thing I like, it's authentic because it's coming from a genuine place, from a place of love and passion for the game and no politics attached to it. So when we come back, um, we'll dive in to this, um, to this topic to give you a better idea of where we want to go in tonight's podcast. We'll be right back. So the question is, who is KMSA? KMSA is a training academy uh, focused primarily on the development of individuals uh, based on their pathway, based on where they want to be um, in their careers. And also, um, focus a lot on young players who uh, want to be introduced to the game and players who are at the fundamental stage making sure that we are orienting and reorienting and the players on a consistent basis. Yeah, welcome back. Welcome back. Um, if you missed it, we're talking we're talking about where SAC is going and you are not the objective here is to just to raise your awareness and your consciousness so you're not left behind with perception 
in your hands. Last week we spoke about the psychological aspect of it and how to deal with the stresses that comes with the game um, because we felt like it's not being addressed in a professional way to help you to self-identify and to optimize your performances. Um, I was reading an article just um, today and, you know, soccer at the travel and, and the other levels are kind of seeing a, a, a downward spiral. But the funny thing, it's recreation soccer is on the rise. What they call grassroots. Um, there's something... <laughs> There's something about that, that if you are playing now and thinking about um, being at the next level, uh, that this is something you want to pay careful attention to. Because if recreation is on the rise and organized uh, soccer, which is supposed to be representing development in terms of the game and the expectations of the game, and it's going downwards, then there will be less opportunities for you. So where you spend your time, what you do, how you invest will have, you will now have to be very particular in how you go about that. I wouldn't like to be a parent now um, with, with a child desiring to play at the highest level. Uh, it's, it's very, um, it, it's a very, very uh, particular place to be right now. With a child on one hand has this great desire and want to be there, but parents truly don't understand. And now with what is happening and recreation becoming more important, you know, with, with parents who don't truly understand the process in some ways and shape, how are you asking them to invest their resources? Um, it, you're going you're gonna to have to play for fun. This We talk about fun a lot. Now it will actually be for fun anyway. You know, this week we would like to give, um, we would like to take this time to give what we call the nudge, the nudge of the day, or really focus on high performers. Um, and this week we want to, to, to really respect and salute um, Senegalese coach, Mr. Alua Sise, for what he would have done in the Afghan Cup. Yeah, that was quick and it was short, but it's important for us to, to salute um, coaches from all over the world when they when they do great things i'm i'm truly proud of this guy i watched him in the in the last world cup <clears throat> and how his countrymen really got behind him the support was immense um and 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 he fought to be in this position um this is important for us because there's leaders in, in all walks of life. It's, you know, none of us are too primitive to be in a position to lead men, um, to lead our nation, to lead, um, to, lead to lead progress, you know. So I salute, I salute him because he has done a magnificent job um, against the, the, the labels, against the the norms he he has shown that he has the ability to manage men and to create champions if you have done something if you have done something to that effect or you would have done something to impact the lives of people you know feel free to share it with us because it's important that people know if people cannot do if they don't know so while you might think, you know, I don't want to do that because I don't want to this and I don't want to that. No, it's important. If you have a humble um, a humble heart, a heart full of humility, and you're doing something great and you're doing something that you want to share with the world and you want to share with other young people and you want to open up doors and you want to expose people to things that they're not being exposed to, yes, this is important. 
You know, I remember Jesus. He never went and hide. He spoke openly. You know, so you have to, you have to check your heart with what you're doing. And if you're doing it with the right heart and you're doing it with the heart of a Samaritan, then it's important that we salute you here at the Coach Kayo Show. So feel free to send us something that you are doing and something that you want to you want to do to impact more lives that you see struggling. We will be happy to do that. This week we want to move forward with part three to deal with the tactical aspect of the game um, that needs to be addressed. Hopefully we can add value to your lives at the ending of this podcast. Please permit me to introduce a very important aspect of where the game is going tactically and you are not. We talk about tactically, but what do we truly understand when we hear tactically? Um, it means it's a cognitive demand based on ages and stages of development. It has to do with your game model, which relates to principles, general principles or main principles that you have as a coach or as an organization that you live by. These main principles are broken down into sub-principles that you actually based it on different areas of the field. Some coaches don't use different areas of the field, which they have their why. Okay, but it's broken down um, by main principles, sub principles, and sub sub principles, as you would that as you would hear. It's all to lead the behavior of the individuals and the team. So we talk about tactical. We're talking about a cognitive demand, and the cognitive demand demands are are based on your idea of the game as a coach, what principles you use to guide the individuals and the team behavior. Very, it's very, very uh, it's important to understand that because you hear a lot about tactical and obviously it starts with the ages and the stages because tactical and cognitive demands can be complex and it can be basic. So understanding ages and understanding the stages in which your players are in and 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 where they are from a um from a skill set will determine if you can be complex or you need to be basic. I'll give you an example of you know if you get it wrong you can you can lose the trust of your of your players. When you look at the complex aspect of a cognitive demand, you might be talking about overloads. You might be talking about um, numerical superiority. Try telling a nine-year-old that and see what happens. That might be a bit too complex for them. But a nine-year-old, you could talk about creating space, how to make the field big and, and make it wide and long. Try telling... Uh, 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 advanced player about that and he, he will look like you he will look at you like if so you think I'm 11 so understanding that is is, is truly um, is truly important because where coaches the, the demands that that is placed on coaches now they're calling it um, predictive validity that's what they're calling it now. So they're they're now assessing the coach's um, success rate. They now, when I when I when I started off the first podcast and I said that the game is going to science, maybe some people are like, okay, yeah, right. But now professional clubs are hiring their coaches based on this method, predictive validity. Nothing is nothing is done by instincts anymore. It's it, or by luck. They are now putting you through an assessment to determine if you can produce results. If you have a winning method. 
if you have a winning coaching methodology or a winning training methodology, if you have the skill set necessary to lead men, manage men, women for high performance. Now, if that is being placed on the coaches, and we're talking about the tactical side of the game and where it's going and you are not, if they're putting that demand on the coaches now, because success brings money. Success brings sponsorship. Success brings endorsement. Success brings long-term stability. So if, if that is the case, then what are they asking you to do now? What will be the expectations on the players? Excuse me. <laughs> so we will look at a very important aspect tonight in terms of the tactical side of the game. And mind you, the tactical side of the game is the cognitive demands that you placed on the individual on the individuals within the team based on levels, based on their ages, based on their stages of development, or on their stage of development. And hopefully you grasp what I said with the two different things. One can be complex based on who is in front of you and who you have to go against. And one can be very basic because of where that player is at the moment. So we'll look at a very important aspect um, and where the game is going and you are not. And that is decision making. But before we dive into these very important, um, very important component, let's listen uh, to this short video and see if it connects with what I just said. Take a look. What do you do? What are you going to play? Man, first of all, I have to know the quality of my players. I know that. But also I have to know the way the opponent is going to play. If they play five in the back or four in the back, high pressing or playback or long balls or ball possession, it's completely different. And that's why football is so nice, because every game is completely different. Very simple. Great Pep Guardiola. Um, as simple as it sounds, though, <laughs> that it's a, um, if you're not a learner and you're, you're only, and you only understand superficial things, you might not get it. Um, but what is coming behind this discussion, try to remember what Pep Guardiola just said in terms of first he recognized who is in front of him. It starts with who is in front of him, his players. And then he went on to say, he went on to speak about the opposition. And it's based on can you make decisions that will impact the game in a meaningful way based on the decisions you are able to make. Let's take this short break before we go a bit deeper into what Pep just had to say. If I do this and he comes short, two center backs must make a decision. And if he makes this decision, then there's a space between the lines. There's a space behind the defender. And that is a space to exploit. Now you need an accurate and effective pass. Not just an accurate pass that goes straight here to the player, but an effective pass which goes where I want to finish. So this allows me to run behind because of the gap. Welcome back to the Coach Kaya Show. Kaya Day here. Hope you like that um, short teaching um, video. 
Um, if you haven't done so yet, please share this live. Please encourage your peers to come in. If you want to come in with a pen and a book, it might not be for you. It might just be for the person next to you or the person just behind you based on where you are. So very important, decision-making in football, um, soccer, wherever you are, speaking to my Car Caribbean people, speaking to North American people, um, speaking to European people, everybody understands or, or defines the game differently or calls it differently. Excuse me. So it's no disrespect to, to no one. Yeah. Soccer, football, decision making. What is that? Decision making is more than just decision making. It's rather decisions that can impact the game. Um, decisions that separate, you know, good from great. We just can't we just can't say decisions because we relate decisions to tactical things which are cognitive demands based on principles. It's based on principles. And as simple as Pep put that, it's the way that the game is now going that players cannot go. Most players are taught to be problem solvers rather than decision makers. They are more problem solvers based. You know, this attitude will leave you behind based on where the game is going at this, at this point in time. Players believe that soccer, which is a game of skill, it's a game of skill. And a game of skill is not played with your consciousness. A conscious brain reacts reacts to problems that would have already occurred. This is why they speak so highly about players having the ability to take initiatives and be proactive and not reactive. A problem-solving brain is a conscious brain. Tactically, you are not able to perform at the highest level. You have a problem-solving brain because that's how you're being taught. And you can only you can only learn what you are taught. Oh, is there a place for a, a, a conscious brain? Absolutely. It takes a conscious brain to download data, to download enough data that drives your decision through your subconscious competence, which is unconscious competence. So what goes in, or what you allow to go in, will be downloaded. And if the writings, if only problem solving is being downloaded, when you find yourself in critical situation and chaos, your brain don't understand that. Because your brain needs to stop and process what it needs to do before it can do it. That's a simple ABC. You know, I had, a, I had an instructor that say, keep it simple, stupid, Kyle. Don't, don't try to complicate it. Because it's already complicated. Soccer is a very complex game. But most people don't value it because they just see it as recreation. Yet they demand greatness, though. Most people see soccer as just recreation, as, you know, some reason or so that people that coach or people that play soccer, they are dumb. 
or it's not a respectful or a, a, a respectful job, as you would say. I don't see it as a job. I see it as work because it's purpose. It's purpose-driven. But most players are taught to be problem solvers and not decision makers. A decision-making brain will require you to own the processes. You have to own it. Since we must do it faster, we have to do it faster than our consciousness. So when we talk about decision-making, we have to own the processes. We have to go through. We have to... We have to... Um, we need more repetitive actions that is consistent with the cognitive demands of the game, which is the principle or are the principles within all four, six moments of the game. So you have to be able to think at a, as a, at a faster rate than your conscious than your consciousness, or you're consciously, consciously trying to think. So, if you only have a problem-solving brain, so I could, so that we could understand this, it means that you're trying to play the game with your consciousness, which we all know the brain don't work well under stress. If you have not trained it. To do so. And I did an exercise with a player and I said, if, when something happens, when you hear a song or somebody does something, the first thing you do is protect your head. You never, nobody never hear a song and, and try to hold their leg or, or hold their fingers or something. The first thing they do, they put up their hands and they protect their head because that's what your brain does. It protects you. So the first signal will be protection to say fight or flight kind of thing yeah nurses doctors might better explain this but abc one two three so if the brain sees something that it has not done or it's not fully rewired then it goes to fear doubts excuses everything else because it's its nature is to protect itself we protect ourselves it's just nature when stuff happens that we we are embarrassed or something happens we just go into protection mode that's why it's good to be silent <laughs> Regardless, just, just be silent. Work it out. Be better for it. So the game is going in this direction where you, you must be able to play faster than your conscious thinking. You cannot do that without specific training methodology and coaching methodologies. Think about that for a second because, so, well, okay, you know, what do you really mean? You have to be more tactically efficient. That's decision making without consciousness, without consciously doing something. That's what makes you efficient. This is why people walk around with a lot of perception because they, they truly don't understand it to this magnitude. They think because I'm in a club and I'm going to these tournaments and I'm training because I have a coach who probably have an A license and all of these things. Yeah, I'm in a good place, but you, it don't matter if you have the license or whatever, you have to be competent enough and have the skill. Soccer is still a game of skill. It's not a game of education. It's not school. 
people like to say it's just like school. It's, it got absolutely nothing to do with school. What you can do, though, you can, you can use some of the teacher's methods that they are now using to enhance your ability to impact and to raise the awareness and consciousness of your athletes. But it's not school. It's a skill. You are not using your consciousness to play the game. You are using your unconscious competence that you would have downloaded with repetition, understanding the process, and allowing the athlete to choose You see some of the greatest players, how much masters they have, how much doctorate they have. <laughs> but yet you pay thousands of dollars to go see them. It's their discipline. It's their understanding of what repetition can do to put them in that situation. So that you want to sign, you want them to sign, um, you want them to give you an autograph. Education is important, but how many times do you see doctors signing autographs? <laughs> how many times? How many times? The doctors are doing crazy things. They're saving lives. They... They're leaving their houses at all hours in the morning and, and all of this, but nobody's waiting outside for the doctor to sign an autograph. But they will stay hours and hours outside of a dressing room waiting for an athlete. People are attracted to discipline. They're attracted to things that they cannot do, things that they, whatever they have, they can't do that, and they're attracted to that. There's something about that that draws them because they see it as something special. But it's coaching, is understanding the coaching process and being committed to it and being honest with it would have loved, would have afforded these players the ability to do what they're doing now that you fell in love with. You must have that subconscious knowledge. If you're going to be a good decision maker, you must have that subconscious knowledge. What is knowledge? Is the ability to internalize. Everything in soccer starts with information. You hear it. You see it. Then you must become knowledgeable. You must internalize it. You must make it your own. It's a process of understanding cues. That's what it is. When you are knowledgeable about something, you understand cues. Cues allow you to make quick, efficient decisions. That's where the game is going. You see a coach stop the theme, intervention time. Stop. You, did you not see this open space? So listen, and, and, they, and it, they can articulate, them, articulate themselves well. Because they've played and, you know, they have a, a good idea. They have, a, they have an idea. They have the passion. They want to do it. But you have to have a learner's mentality. So you will see the intervention and you see it on Instagram and you see it on Twitter and you see it all over. Stop. When you see this, make sure you go in, make sure you play this. And excuse me. Yeah. And you need to do this problem solving because the problem already happened. So now they're standing there and they're able to process what you're saying. Obviously, they will go do it. And even in those moments, you could they will say, Yes, I understand. And then the same moment happened, the same moment happened three minutes after, and they'd make the same error. 
What about picking up the cues before? What about when you stop, ask more guided questions, more, talk more, teach more about the principles and the why and what outcomes and stuff. It's not always about di giving directives. They said leading questions. No, guided questions, discovery. This is where the game is going. The players must be able to make the decisions based on principles, which leads them to understanding cues. Because the game, as Pep Guardiola say, it's situational. The situational, the situational will never be the same. And you have four moments to contend with that you are not able to use your conscious brain. You have to be able to use your subconscious brain, which leads to the definition of decision-making. You cannot say you're making decisions because you're able to be a problem solver. You must be able to see the problem before it happens. And make decisions that can impact the result of the game. This is the great player. Because you have to play at a devastating pace. Devastating. Let's listen to the word. Devastating pace. Let me try to raise your awareness and your consciousness in terms of where you're going. You must have the ability. This really leads you to um, looking at less and seeing more. That, that is a decision-making brain. Can you look at less and see more? Not see less, look at less and see more. Because you have given your time to learning rather than seeking success. This is a decision-making brain. If the coaches are constantly stopping where the mistake lies, he is not developing a decision-making brain. He's developing a problem-solving brain, which is a reactive brain. The problem happens, and then you fix it. The idea in soccer is to recognize the cues so that you can make better decisions. Seeing less, looking at less, Looking at less. You might want to write that down. Looking at less and seeing more is the ability to make good decisions. This is where the game is going and you are not. Because you have to have a learner's mentality. The coaches must have a learner's mentality. So when you hear people say, I don't need to go to no course. I don't need to do this. I am good. I play. I know. Um, not because you have all those things. Not because you have an ELI, so that means you can coach, that you're a good coach. You still have to commit yourself to actually doing the work because you can get your ELI and you go into an environment that don't want you to do nothing that afforded you the opportunity to have it. Then what is the point? Because you are still limiting yourself and you will limit your players. Because you can only do what you are taught. So yes, you are right to say that. It don't matter what license you have. A doctor could have a license too. But if they refuse to do the right things, then you will die. A lawyer could have the, the license, but if the lawyer chooses to lie, 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 and don't ever speak the truth, then you might just win, and you might not, you might not 
you should not have won because you know exactly what you did. But you pay enough money to this lawyer to skillfully get you off. So yes, license don't matter until you honestly do the work and you commit to the process. That means you are always learning. Once you are learning, you always you are you will never be invaluable. You will never be invaluable as long as you are learning. This is why they say wealthy people always look for ideas. Rich people, they have the they have their toys and they and they're set and they're comfortable. So our young players are in a really tough spot. But I want to leave you um, with a few things to help you to, to move forward. And there's a lot more, but it will take a couple months for, you, for us to truly dive into this thing and peel it back and figure out where we're going. Let's take this time again to say thank you for staying and listening. I hope that you share this so that we kind of change how we're doing things and what we're demanding and what we're asking for because we like success. There's a saying that everybody wants to learn, but nobody wants to be taught. Because learning, you don't get to decide when you stop. You have to keep going because there's a desire for more. There's always a desire for how far, how far can I get? What else is there? And some people just moving along. They're not waiting on you. And you oftentimes will be left behind worrying about why you're not getting there because you're fixed. You're a problem solver, not a decision maker. I must encourage you to become a critical thinker. It's something they use in nursing a lot, especially in emergency. You know, if you're not a critical thinker and you're in the emergency room and people come with things coming out there, I definitely can't be in no emergency room. I don't know. Maybe I can. Who knows? But he uses a lot there because you have to know ahead of time what is coming and are you prepared to deal with it? Because it might decide a person's life. You're not going into public where, you know, you're feeling some pain, but they could monitor you and, and they could give themselves time and solve the problems. When you come in there and blood gushing from all over, you need people to know exactly what they need to do. I remember one time I went, I was playing and I, and, and my over my eyes were burst and it was open and I had to go get some stitches. And I get I get to the play, I get to the hospital and don't know if these were young nurses trying to trying to they know learn their stuff, they, but they were trying to figure out which needle to use. <laughs> my my whole side of my face is swelling up and it's like should I use this one? Is this one too big? I was like, listen, I'm going to go home and put some ice. That's it. They weren't ready. Be a critical thinker. You're not able to guess if you want to be a high performer. You're not able to guess. You, 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 you're not playing with... with with your instincts. But you play in an instinct that would have developed true knowledge, internalizing, repetition, not education. I don't care how much you get in straight A's. That don't mean you're a good soccer player. That don't mean you will think well on a field because you being a good student or being an intellectual person is because you're good at solving problems. 
I've never seen you walk into the school the first day, first day of high school, the teacher said, here, this is a test today. Everybody will look around like, well, okay, I, I, I don't know. But you hit that soccer field and you have to know the principles and you have to be able to execute them, basic or complex. You have to do it. That's the only thing that helps you to develop a skill. The teachers will give you a whole term and then say, at the ending, you will have this test. They give you some tests in between to see if you're learning, and then they go back, they assess, they reflect. Like I said, coaches can learn a lot from top-class teachers who are using innovative ways of bringing their students up to the next level because they have them. If you're a learner, you will know as a coach. Wanting to develop young people, not just on a soccer field, but in life. There's a lot of methods there that can be used, but this is not school. You are not, you are not able, you don't have the time to solve problems. You have to be a critical thinker. That means you must learn the principles to the point where you can recognize cues and make effective, efficient decisions. Maybe if it sounds like Spanish, that's why the game is going in a direction and you are not. Finally, don't seek success. This is a big one that is stopping the process. Be a learner. Be a person that wants to add value to your environment. Be a person that wants to, you know, push yourself to the next level, to focus on what is next. How else can I improve? Not because I'm wearing a nice uniform and going to a good tournament. It's the same thing you say about a coach. Not because he has an A license. That means he's he. Uh, uh, that means he can coach, or he has an A license, so he can automatically automatically coach. You have the same idea because you go into a tournament or you play in a team. You automatically good because they have travel and they have rec. So by you standing up there, you think you know what? I'm good. I don't, you know, I don't need to learn. I'm successful because I'm playing at the highest level. At the highest level that the perception says, is high. Be a learner. I tell you, it's great value in trying to learn every day. You know, I used to want, I used to worry a lot about stuff in terms of, why am I not there and how this and how that, how that, how that. I was like, and now every day and time would have passed and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Relax and keep learning. Keep learning. Keep focus on where things, where the thing is going, and you try to go there with it because the time will come. You are not there yet because you are not ready. And how you know that? Because some things happen, and you're like, okay, I don't, I don't know what I, what I would have done in that situation. And then you learn, and you're like, okay think I'm ready now to try, not because I'm good. So there's a lot of value and there's a lot of benefits in having a learner's mentality and not a success mentality. Success put, the, as we say in Guyana, success put the cart before the horse. That means you're going in the wrong direction. And because you're going in the wrong direction, you or the horse will get tired and you will stop. So success don't just slow down the process. It stop the process of growth. If you are so focused on success, you want instant gratification. That means you deny the process to learn. Because with a skill, you need to do it over and over and over until you can read the cues. And you can't give six years to being a problem solver and then want to give six months to be a decision maker. 
This is why there's so much conflicts on the field because players, parents have an expectation and the coaches who actually know about development want the process to happen because when you speak about development, you don't talk about success. You don't hear Liverpool saying they're, they're doing development at their first team. They talk, we need to win. They don't hear Manchester United talking about, oh, we're, we're developing play. No, they have to win. They are the highest level. So why are we telling young players about success? Success comes from a result of learning. You cannot do the test without doing the work first. The teacher will never... They will give you a test to, to assess where you are so they can start the process of teaching so that you can be well prepared to then take the test. But if we don't want the learning aspect, we don't want to go through the process, then, and we want the success, then we are always putting our children or we're always putting ourselves in a place of regressing rather than progressing. A lot of people will be stressed out and depressed. It said 50% of kids at the age of 14 will suffer from mental health. And then by the time they by the time they get to 27, 74% will suffer from mental health. Please, that is something to think about. Why is that happening? It means it's not manifesting itself right away. It's something that is building up because of what is happening. Success make, makes you focus externally. It's always somebody else's fault. It's always somebody don't know what they're doing. It's always somebody, you know, not good enough. It's always something. A learner looks into his or herself because you want to know. You know, I spoke to a teacher one time and they said, you know, we all have this blind spot with us. Maybe it's a method they use. There's a blind spot where oftentimes people can tell you something about you, but because you don't see it, you dismiss it. But if you could just have a learning mentality and somebody says something and you step back and you start, you begin to observe yourself and you became and you be and you start um, assessing some of your behaviors. You start even listening to yourself. One of the things that I did as a coach that I would put on a mic and I would listen to what I say. And a lot of times before now, I would be like, I didn't even, I didn't, I wasn't even sure. I didn't know that I said that. It made me cringe a bit. So it's 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 not for style, it's for learning. It's you video your practice for learning, not for Instagram. It's good. You could do that, fine. But the purpose of doing that should be for your own learning so you can create learners. So that they can make good decisions based on the decisions you are making about their development. It's a domino effect. I could only teach what I learned. So if you say you don't need to go to no course or anything, it's not the course, it's the ability to, de to put yourself in those vulnerable situations. It's the ability to be uncomfortable. The same thing you'd be telling the players, right? You got to be uncomfortable. You have to be brave. But, but why are you not going? Why are you quickly saying? It's not about the course. It's not about the license. It's about the mindset to go and learn because I guarantee you there's something in there that will make you think deeper. That starts the process of learning. Thinking deeper than the superficial stuff. If you don't want to learn, you cannot help the kids. You cannot help the ladies. You cannot help the men. You cannot help the boys. You cannot help the girls. You are creating dysfunction within the society because you are given the responsibility to develop people's 
behavior that will show in society true soccer it's a skill that cannot be taught in school so you are the extension it's a skill that cannot be taught at home you are the extension as the professional coach as the professional organization to equip these young people with the right tools so they go back into school and they be good students teachers don't even want to teach anymore some teachers scared like oh, i'm going to deal with them with those little kids i don't want none to do those 14 15 and 16 i don't what is wrong what is wrong what is wrong what is happening that people don't even want to take the risk they are skilled. They went to they went to college to learn to teach. Yet they say, "Ah, oh, no, I'm not going in there." These kids don't want to learn. So now they're coming up with different methodologies to improve that aspect. You and I are extensions of that, and we must come up with innovative ways also to improve the decision making to help the players to move where they suppose move in the direction they should be going because this will not just do a good job in terms of soccer it will do an even better job with life it's not about result it's about learning it's better to ask what questions and you know how many times your players go home and you say, what did you learn today? How many times they go home from the game? What did you learn today? No, oh, you guys lost? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm losing every game. You guys not good. You know what you're doing to your child by saying that? You didn't even know that mentally your child got something out of that, that now they're willing to say, you know what? I could do more. If, if I just do this yeah, and hear what you just put in them, doubts, fears. You say the coach not good, the coach not this, external. Because guess what? Your only idea of development is success. So what is the word development? But what does it mean? Last time I checked is a process that leads you to success. And none of us can de determine that time and that space. Is the choice of the individual. Your power is not to make decisions for your children. Your power is to guide your children. Once again, you might say, what are you talking about? All right. As we're about to leave, I want to, I want to, I want to, to do something that I've learned. And it has worked with all my players. And it taught me something very very, very important lesson. So I'm going to try this exercise. And if you're looking and you're listening to me, I want you to be honest and I want you to try this exercise with me. Hopefully we'll learn something at the end. This is, this is where I close the show. Are we ready? All right, here it goes. I'm going to give you some commands, right? And let's see how you react to these commands if you're listening okay get yourself organized get yourself set excuse me if you're laying down just just, just sit up a little bit and if you want to stand up do that too it's a very important exercise and if you're standing next to your parent do it with them ask them to do it beg them to do it so it's a really good exercise are we ready all right here it goes i'm going to give you some command please I'm going to give you some commands. I want you. Let's see what will happen. Okay, here it goes. Choose to know what your right eye is doing. Choose to know what your left little finger is doing. Choose to know what your right wrist is doing right now. You choose. Choose not to. Choose not to, choose not to know 
what your left eye is doing. Choose not to know what your left eye is doing. Choose not to know what your left eye is doing. Okay. If you paid attention to your left eye, that is exactly what is happening with your child. When you don't allow the process of learning to happen. It's more important to learn and spend time until you come um, to that place where you feel, as an individual, you need to stop. When you keep... When you keep making it about success and not learning, you download doubts, fears, lack of self-awareness. And it shows up in critical times. It shows up when your child is under stress. It shows up when they're, then there's a great demand on them to perform. It shows up. Because they're not given the space, they're not given the support in terms of their learning because it's, it's, it has to be about the, the convenience, it has to be about the money you're spending, it has to be that. So you want success now in a game of skill. You cannot pay for a skill. You can pay. To invest, you can invest in your learning so you develop the skill. It's not school. You go to school for eight hours a day, five days a week, for four years in high school. Then you do the same thing in college. And yet you come out and you have to still become an intern because you don't have the experience. And that is solving problems. You're faced with problems and you have to solve it. And some kids are really good at it. They get straight A's. That don't mean nothing on a soccer field. Absolutely nothing. That brain, dude, it would never transform on a field until you become a critical thinker, which you must be taught principles, understanding of cues, and be able to implement it in a stressful situation. Have a good night. Thanks for staying with me here. If you want to learn a bit more about what we do at Chemistry, feel free to reach out um, to all the contacts running across your screen. Continue to support your child. Continue to support their learning. I know it's a long and hard process, but guess what? If you take that away, just like you, even though I said choose not to look at your left eye, you still went to your left eye because no one likes to be told not what to do when they want to choose to do it. Stay blessed and have a good week. God bless you. A wide variety of episodes are already available, chock full of incredible insight from two qualified experienced coaches. Here are some previews of eye-opening quotes. Lots of players think they need to drive an hour or two hours to get good training. Because community clubs do not feel, most of them, if not all of them, don't feel the responsibility to provide every child the best opportunity. This is for players to have fun, so why not name it rec? An elite league shouldn't be based on teams. It should be based on the coaching. There's no integrity in the game. It's all about business. It's it, That's all it is. There's nothing about soccer first. Everything is about giving the athletes an experience. We hope you are available to tune in. New episodes every Monday night.